Hello, and welcome. There's so many different ways to say hello. I always struggle with which one to greet you with. My great uncle used to answer the phone by saying Jello. <laughs> Jello. And then I would say J E L L O. It's alive. Great marketing, people. We cut out shapes of Jello. Fantastic. Never really quite uh, got them to actually look like shapes when they were coming out of the cutters. They were just sort of jello and they didn't form into the shapes. So, you know, marketing is a lie. We're circling back. Anyway, have you ever been so warm that you wanted to jump into a freezing cold river in the middle of winter? No. No. You probably haven't, but some people might, like Karin. Karin is a beautiful person who has decided to take control of her fibromyalgia pain. And in doing so, she takes a dip in freezing cold water outside in nature every single day. I thought that that was really interesting and I just wanted to get more details on how this works for her and I just have to do the general warning slash don't sue me thing. If you are experiencing any sort of symptoms of fibromyalgia or any other type of chronic pain, please go see your doctor and talk to them first before you try any sort of other methods of pain management to make sure that it's okay for your body. So listen in to this week's episode of Karin Living with Fibromyalgia. Let's be real. People love to gloss over chronic conditions or disabilities with a fleeting comment like, just be positive, or a fleeting insult like, kale will cure you. This is a podcast for when you face a different reality knowing that positivity isn't a magic wand that's going to cure everything, but a flashlight in the dark that we may or may not have batteries to. Living with a chronic illness or disability makes you feel different, and your difference could be noticeable to others or not, but either can sometimes make you feel invisible. I'm here to tell you that your experience is valid and shared by others in the dark. Positivity is not the missing puzzle piece that's going to solve your life's puzzle, but it can be a beautiful tool that can help you grow, and sharing those experiences can make us grow together. We got just a couple of inches down here, and then my partner lives like a little further up the hill, and uh, they definitely got like a foot of snow. (laughs) Wow, that's crazy. It's April. I love it. (laughs) See, like, I love that you love it because I am the opposite. So many people feel exactly the way that you do. There's just this, like, cultural terror of the cold. (laughs) Yeah. Tell me about how you started doing ice baths. So I am somebody who has always interacted with the cold Um, from the time that I was super young. I experienced nature just every day growing up was was just part of one of those families and um my birthday is later this month and I would always do a um a dip in in some water on my birthday just as like you know I I like had this concept in my head of like well but everyone skinny dips on their birthday so you know why (laughs) why would I let my birthday being in a colder month keep me from that so (laughs) I always loved it as a kid and I got a job at uh, an outdoor rec company when I was 18 and I worked there for seven years and so for seven years I was basically outside every single day (laughs) for my job yeah that'll (laughs) definitely do it (laughs) it was incredible and you just yeah you you like you get used to it in a professional sense you get used to just kind of like sucking it up and putting the face on for the guests and being smiley no matter how you're feeling. So I think there's definitely like a little piece of that that's <laughs> kind of held through to this. I'm like, I can smile and be uncomfortable. So easy, you know? <laughs> I make it look easy, but, but yeah. 
I didn't really engage with it as like a, I mean, it's my pain management. It's my pain therapy. <laughs> it's my physical therapy. It's my emotional therapy. It's, it's everything wow. now. And so that didn't really start until, um, this, this fall, I started swimming, um, in October and that's when I started doing it daily because wow. I quickly noticed that it wasn't just something that like I kind of loved. It wasn't just something that was like nice, that was like nice to do. It was something that was seriously helping my pain. And then as the waters got colder in the winter, I was just shocked. <laughs> I was blown away. I mean, I, I'm talking about like, I wake up at a 10 by noon, I'm at like a 15 on my pain scale. <laughs> and then like anything past three, 4 PM, forget it. I'm in bed, Yeah, you know? And so going to the water at some point in the morning or, or by noon, or even in the evening gives me back hours of my day. So it got colder and colder last fall. By the time it was down to like around the zero degree or the zero degree Celsius, but like 30, 32 mm -hmm. degree Fahrenheit. I mean, the pain just like you get in and it's gone. Wow. It's mind blowing. It's like, I, you know, I've tried every drug in the book for these illnesses. I've tried, yeah. you know, I, I like, I went through the gambit of, <laughs> of what's out there in terms of medicine. And, and um, there's like some Chinese herbal stuff that's really nice. Um, weed is also very helpful, of course, medical marijuana. Um, and yeah, I have all sorts of like little therapies. You know, I have this acupressure mat. I do Tai Chi. I do, you know, there's all of these things that together can kind of lower my pain and manage my pain a little bit on the daily. But there's nothing like this that just mm -hmm. in a heartbeat. And I, I think I have been thinking about this the last couple of days. And I think I figured out part of why it happens because um, so like tons of us with, with these chronic illnesses, you know, we're saying we're in pain. We mean, you know, one to 10 pain scale. We're at the sort of like eight to 10 range as our like daily, right? That's our, that's our new normal. <laughs> so we're like living at these high, high pain levels. And in conjunction with like how much the pain is, we're also talking about what percentage of my body is experiencing that pain. When you have mm. a broken leg, your leg hurts. Pain is often a single part or like located in a single part of your body. And with the chronic illness stuff, you know, we're talking 80% of my body hurts, 90% of my body hurts. Right. I'm talking every single cell in my body hurts. And then the water, once you get in, every cell in your body is interacting with it. Yeah. And I think that it just finds a way to overpower everything else that's going on with you. You know, like I have like gone in with insane period cramps. Anyone who has had menstrual cramps will tell you, you know, they're debilitating and, <laughs> you know, like it's hard stuff. And I, like, you walk into the water and they're gone. Wow. Yeah. So what, what made you start doing this? Like, how did you hear about going into the water and having it help your chronic pain? I first heard about it from my partner who um, had done some Wim Hof breathing before in his life. And, and um, he, he and I are such polar opposites with this. He's had, he's had really like traumatic experiences with cold water. And, um, and I haven't. So, <laughs> so luckily all of my trauma, all of my baggage is like, <laughs> it's not involving the thing that I'm trying to engage with when totally. he's going into the water, he's like having to engage all of that emotional trauma with the thing that he knows that helps him. It's crazy. So he's been doing the cold water stuff for a little while and definitely doing the breathing. And, and we both do meditation and breath work regularly. Yeah, and so tell me uh, about the Wim Hof. Uh, who yeah, is that? So, He's awesome. He's this eccentric Dutchman who, <laughs> who has uh, just found this in his own life as a result of dealing with emotional pain. His wife committed suicide and um, he needed something to engage with so that he could figure that out instead of just dissociating and instead of just mm -hmm. stepping back and being scared and being able to to like recognize where you are in relation to both what your body is doing and what your brain is doing doesn't have to be so swayed 
by what your body's doing and your brain is doing. You can remain centered, you can remain peaceful, and you can work through these things without them toppling you over, you know? And so what is the breathing technique like? Is it like a certain amount of counts or how does it work? Yeah. So he's got a couple of really great YouTube videos and he talks about how he sort of like intuitively came to this breathing method. And the more you engage with the cold, I mean, it just is so helpful. So you do like deep belly breath, like yogic, (laughs) really deep, deep breath in and then just kind of like a relax on the exhale. You do that 30 times in a row. Sometimes you can go over that. I, I'll sometimes just let it play for the like 40 times or whatever and and um, just really <laughs> get going. Mm-hmm. And um, so you, you do that, um, the relaxed breath out and hold. And you'll find that you can hold your breath as you practice this breath work and as, um, as you just your body gets more acclimated to it. You can hold your breath for two minutes. Wow. Or longer. Yeah. <laughs> and like... You know, I, I've done some breath work. I've done some meditation in my life, but I've never, I've never <laughs> held my breath for two minutes. Holding yeah. my breath. Yeah. Okay. And, <laughs> and you like, I don't know. It's, it's such a fascinating thing to start engaging with. Once you start engaging with breath work, it's just endless. You know, there's so much out there that you can do, but so the idea of this process, so you repeat that three times, three or four or five, whatever you want to do. And every time you can probably hold your breath a little longer or, or maybe you can't, maybe like, you know, a bird is chirping and you get a little distracted and you end up breathing. (laughs) It's all just, (laughs) it's just no problem at all. But, um, but yeah, I think, you know, the breath work is designed to uh, increase the amount of building blocks you have in your system, the like chemistry building blocks that you have in your, your system that produce energy. And so if you're, you're upping your oxygen levels so that then your body on a chemistry level has a chance to deal with some of the stress that it's experiencing and has a chance to heal because you can't be doing both at once. We just don't have the energy. Yeah. in our bodies nobody does <laughs> yeah and, you know like stress like, really does just take over your whole system yeah and i think that no one really i mean people understand it to a point but really understanding when you're chronically ill and you're stressed like the stress needs to go down like there's like like it's now <laughs> now like it is of the utmost importance you can't be staying in that state it's so important cuz It's inevitable that you're going to get stressed, but being able to manage that in your own way is something that I've learned to sort of deal with with chronic illness. It's been a it's been a ride for sure. (laughs) It certainly is. It's so interesting because you have to change your life. You have to. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I, I you know I said in one of my posts the other day, like I felt like I just had to transcend or die. Mm -hmm. You know, (laughs) I like could recognize that the painful existence that I was in before I started doing the ice baths, before I like was giving myself something that was actually feeding the parts of me that needed healing and and feeding the, my soul, (laughs) you know, I, I think, um, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. My brain, my brain just goes places and I completely forget (laughs) what I'm talking. So feel free to like loop me back around whenever. (laughs) It's okay. I totally feel like whatever I was saying was (laughs) good. You also have like the most beautiful background. I'm very distracted. (laughs) Like that's my hair color and gold. Yes. (laughs) That's all I want in life. (laughs) It took me a while to really get to doing it. I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll do it. And then it was quarantine. And I was like, I'm not doing literally anything else. I might as well just paint my walls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think, you know, there's um it's sort of interesting that my like illness timeline has sort of like matched up with the pandemic because I, <laughs> you know, really fell, fell quite ill over last summer and into the fall. And, and at that point lost my job and, yeah. and for the first time in my life was just like, <laughs> yeah, what now? You, you know? So were you first diagnosed at the beginning of the pandemic? Was that your start? Um, so I was first diagnosed with fibromyalgia almost four years ago now. Oh, okay. Um, And I was just talking to a girl online yesterday. She was saying she got diagnosed a couple of years ago. Nobody back then told her how bad it could get. And same Mm. thing with me. It was like, you know, somebody mentioned it. Somebody said the word and was kind of like, 
well, you've got that now. And, oh my gosh. <laughs> and, um, and didn't tell me that there was anything I could do to prevent it from getting worse. Didn't tell me to pay attention to my stress levels. Didn't tell me to pay attention to my sleep. Didn't, t- you know, like mm-hmm. it was just, you know, like the, the sort of like sticker mark of like, here's your diagnosis right. <laughs> was Check there, the but it, it was like, you know, the support wasn't there whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And so I went about my life. I went and got married to a Scotsman who ended up (laughs) being really abusive. And so I left him and came back. Yeah. (laughs) It's been an interesting life, girl. Let me tell you. (laughs) (laughs) And, um, sort of like along that journey with all of that stress that was happening, my body just kept going downhill. Mm -hmm. Like I was, um, living in the UK, in the UK, you can buy codeine over the counter. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can't over here. It's, it's like, it took me almost, uh, four, four to six months, I think, to get my first codeine prescription over here once things got really bad. And I thought all it was going to take was, was sitting in there and them looking at me in the face and seeing that I was in pain and saying, Hey, I need something for this. And I'm saying, okay. And it wasn't, (laughs) you know, like doctors, especially around here, either told not to, or just genuinely do not want to prescribe any sort of opioid medication. And I like, you know, I was like, but I used to get this over the counter. (laughs) Right. That is (laughs) such a difference. I've I've already lived in a culture where this is accessible to me. And I've already, like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, well, I've already proved that I'm not a drug addict because it's already been accessible to me. And I haven't become addicted to, you know, like, statistical thinking probably, but (laughs) it took like switching doctors and which was a great, finally found somebody who listens to me so much more and really like, working on kind of like covering all our bases with this stuff so again like became uh or was diagnosed with fibromyalgia like four years ago now and that was like directly after a really bad car crash too I've broken my Uh, sternum and my collarbone um mm, do you think that that was like a cause I think that it might have added to it um but I was I like certainly felt some of the fibromyalgia stuff before then um in like the kind of in the timeline of (laughs) of my life but that was that was a period of time that was really rough for me I was like not I was just not living my best life you know for real I know (laughs) what you mean (laughs) (laughs) and like things happen but Mm -hmm. and I think that you know that probably would have been a really good time for me to take a step back and and say okay like let me look at (laughs) what I'm doing and, and let me try to find some ways to to be a, a like the better me and and try to find some ways to to mitigate some of those stresses that were going on back then and I just didn't you know I'm mean, yeah <laughs> exactly you think you can handle it you're like whatever everyone's stressed always like it's yeah. a big deal <laughs> and, then, and then you're like in the hospital and you're like this is a big fucking deal like yeah, why didn't I listen to myself deal. yeah and it should have been a big deal earlier so right. that it didn't get to this point <laughs> exactly no yeah. totally so you got into this car crash and then you're recovering and do you fully recover from it or does it just like the pain just increase from there? So I definitely like healed from the car crash, maybe like 80% of the way. Um, and then um, I feel like even now there are still some things in my body that have never fully healed. And that's partially due to the other condition that I have, which is Ehlers-Danlos, which is, uh, so like Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is a umbrella term for something like 40 different kinds of Ehlers-Danlos. Mm-hmm. And the one that I have is, is um, the like hypermobile kind. And so like all of my joints <laughs> oh. don't work. <laughs> my um so there's like like the elastic skin thing there's Uh, like my joints are really bendy um and then all of my like ligaments and my tendons are loose (laughs) so all of the like rubber bands in my body are are like old and stretched out (laughs) so all day long I'm dealing with um what are called like subluxations which is when um a part of your tissue is on like the wrong side of a bone Ooh. And so it feels like a slight dislocation or it fe- I mean, it depends on where it is. Sometimes it's my shoulder and I can kind of like 
pop it back in. (laughs) Sometimes it's my ribs and I can't do anything but lie down. (laughs) And, um, and sometimes it's my legs and I'll be walking and I'll step the wrong way and I'll fall down. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, like my, so my tendon will like flip to the other side of my bone and then my whole leg will just give out yeah. because it's like really not supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Oh so gosh. what makes it flip back? Is it just like time and like a little massage? Massaging helps some of the joints. Um, sometimes it's just like rest. Sometimes that, um, the pressure mat that I was talking about, it's like a acupressure mat. So it's got all of these pressure points. You just kind of like mm-hmm. lie on it. And <laughs> I think what it does is align your fascial tissue system, which is, which just covers everything in your body. Like all of your, um, your ligaments, your tendons, your bones, your muscles, it all has this fascial tissue around it. And, um, I think that it like aligns that stuff, which is kind of like your energetic system Ooh. as well. And what is yeah, this it, called? How do I get? I that? will send you a link. It is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I like didn't get one for ages because so many of them are just like made with plastic and whatever. And yeah. um, I think the one that I found has hemp or at least like the cloth material was cotton. Um, but you know, I don't want to lie on a plastic mat. I want to <laughs> lie on something a little nicer, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Save the planet forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I like finally found one that. I really wanted and and grabbed it and yeah like I lying on it feels totally different and I'll say that it also like I laid on it while my partner and I was having sex and my orgasms were like stronger than they have been in maybe like a year and I think it like opens up this way for me to be like recycling my energy rather than just like expending my energy which is what I get into like it all just expels and then I'm done you know yeah and there's something about it that is aligning me in some way that it's like I'm able to actually reuse some of that energy it's really really nice (laughs) oh my gosh yes and also like the presence you probably find I mean I've experienced that women have to be super present in sex in order to orgasm like sometimes you just get lucky and you're like oh shit that happened but most (laughs) of the time it's like all in our brains we're like overthinking everything and like (laughs) you really have to be present so I feel like maybe too being on that mat and like really just like feeling the very grounding oh yes (laughs) yeah (laughs) That makes a lot of sense to me. One of my my absolute like favorite man in the universe who is sadly no longer with us. Um, he was a tattoo artist of mine. He always said to me, your most powerful sex organ is your brain. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Very yes, <laughs> really took that one to hold. <laughs> like, no matter what my body's doing, I can have a good time. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. Follow the brain. <laughs> Exactly. Well, you definitely show that in just like going into the water, ice cold water every day. I mean, that's definitely a mind over matter thing for sure. Yeah. yeah it's interesting. There's, there's nothing like chronic illness and and your, your daily life being awful mm-hmm. <laughs> and painful to make you want to dissociate. Mm-hmm. And I think that's easy. You know, that's part of what, like, you know, a lot of pain drugs, they're good for dissociation they're Mm -hmm. good for you know forgetting about your reality and your physical existence so that you can kind of manage your life and and have somewhat of a free brain in order to do that stuff and I think the the awesome part about the ice and the cold water is that I'm not dissociating. I'm going ultra in, (laughs) you know, I'm, I'm bringing myself so present that it doesn't hurt anymore. I'm, (laughs) you know, giving myself such a full body grounding and real and tangible experience that I can like live my life from there and be ultra here rather than, always have to be dissociating and always have to be running away from this physical existence. You know, it's, it's been, it's been so amazing. And then like the nature part of it too, you know, I'm, I'm going to some of these spots. I I probably have 
a dozen spots within a 20 minute drive of where I'm sitting, which is amazing. (laughs) I live in a very lucky place to be trying to interact with the natural world. We have so many rivers right where I am, so many brooks, so many streams. And um, it's been so fun to find them all. But, you know, some of these places I go to every day, some of these places I'm going to every couple of days, I'm seeing you know, like I, I watched ice form and then melt all winter. Mm. I watch like, as you know, the trees start budding out and the slight change in color as it goes from this like bright, bright green. And then it's going to start to darken as the season continues. You know, I just, I love being able to interact with my natural ecosystem on a daily basis because it yeah. feel, it helps put your life in a perspective that's more manageable as well you start to understand just that ebb and flow is natural yes <laughs> and that seasons are natural and that cycles are natural <laughs> and that conflict is natural and pain is natural and you know none of these things are worth running from mm-hmm. <laughs> you know oh no, yeah all out here and it's all right here and and being able to experience it and being able to pour some of my pain into these places that are just cycle it. Yeah. They're set up to take Mm -hmm. it (laughs) Mm -hmm. and, and flow away with it and, and deal with it in another, another way (laughs) that doesn't include me. You know, I can go into these places and, and be trusting the natural world with so much of my anguish (laughs) and and my pain. So beautiful. yeah, I hold myself differently than I did six months ago, you know? So amazing. It's so different. So what are you going to do when it starts to get warm out? Are you going to travel? Are we going to see a travel book? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was actually um, someone I follow, uh, Jane. I never remember anyone's. Story of our lives. I mean, everyone in the chronic illness community knows that like our brain fog is real. So no fog is so real all the time. Unless I'm like literally in the ice. Then my mind is like, I'm sharp. I can do math for (laughs) you. Can't do math any other time right now. Anything. Give it to me. Anything that's important, you know? (laughs) No, it's all good. But, um, Oh, she's got, she's got this like tiny little uh, Prius, I think. And she's like totally tricked out the back and with like little camping lights and a mattress. And I'm like, I have a bigger car than her. I could probably yes. do that and just go road tripping. <laughs> yes, do so, yeah, it. Yeah, that's definitely one possibility. I mean, there are so many people in the cold water community up in Canada yeah. Um, that I've been in contact with. And so I like really would love to go and visit some of them and, and uh, yeah, go searching for those pools that still <laughs> are a little chilly. Yeah. Luckily, um, where I am, we have uh, the Deerfield River, which is um, like a, a very dammed river. There's something like 26 dams in a matter of 50 miles wow. of a river or something. That might be an exaggeration, but <laughs> uh, the thing with the dams, it's all hydro. So the water that's being released is being released from the bottom of these super deep reservoirs. Mm-hmm. And so all summer long, the river water here should stay pretty cold. <laughs> wow. And I will tell you, even on a 90 degree day, that water is chilly. <laughs> yeah. And so even though I've never like brought my thermometer and checked it in the summer, because again, only started doing this last fall, mm-hmm. I think that the coldest or the warmest it gets is probably not more than 60 or 65 and Mm. anything under 60 is technically cold water so I don't know I I think it's going to be like a little bit of an experiment just to see what the natural water around here does um and then yeah maybe some travel (laughs) I hope so then, your pictures are so beautiful so I can't wait oh, to see it's been you so much day. fun it's been so much fun do you think that you take it indoors maybe and do like an ice bath have you tried that when like you're not feeling going out or yeah I actually um my dad is an amazing carpenter and um he built me a um ice bath deck so I have like a deck just on the other side of the wall from where my bedroom is on the outside of the building wow. And um, I got like a, a stock tank, like for cows, <laughs> like cow water, and um, filled that up during the winter. And there were a couple of snowstorms where I couldn't get to the water and just dipped in in the um, the little ice bath. And oh in the God. summer, 
I think I'm going to um, insulate it and be like putting ice in it, um, right. especially for those 90 degree days um, around here. You know, it's like, I know when it gets hot and brutal, my body does not do well. I'm like the opposite mm-hmm. of, all, of a lot of people. Warm weather is bad. Yeah. <laughs> Cold weather, I'm doing okay. <laughs> So yeah, it's really going to be about mitigating some of those hotter temperatures, but yeah, definitely. But I'm excited to like watch the journey for sure. How long does the pain subside for when you go into these ice bath or ice waters? Depends on a couple things. One of which is how well I'm engaging with it. Sometimes I'm not super mindful about it and I'm just really excited about looking at some ice and plain and water and <laughs> yeah <laughs> or like you know <laughs> what whatever else is going on sometimes I'm not in that like meditation okay zen mode you know <laughs> mm-hmm. sometimes yeah. I just don't get to that point and and that's okay it's a very fun thing to do anyway <laughs> and oh, and it still removes my pain so like even if I'm not engaging with the breath work not engaging with any kind of mindfulness or meditation cold cold water like like the sort of like 30 degree range, that zero degree range that will zap my pain out for maybe two or three hours pretty easily. (laughs) And then if I'm really engaging with it and, you know, I, I got up to the point this winter where I was in, I think maybe like 34 degree water for something like 20 minutes. And that's when I'm like full on meditating in the water, like doing some energy work, <laughs> trying to open up my third eye. And <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to evolve right here, right now. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, and at that point, because I am, I'm so icing down my body and giving my body such a rest and relaxation and reset that, you know, maybe I'm good for the rest of the day Wow. <laughs> at that point. Maybe that gives me more like six to, to eight hours of pain relief. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And so <laughs> you do only stay in there for a short amount of time, right? You have some things that you are aware of, like you're bringing a buddy. There's other like things that you say that you should probably be aware of when you're going into the water. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, as always, especially if you're doing this for your health, safety first. (laughs) (laughs) Don't be trying to fix one problem and replace it with another one. (laughs) You know, I know. And as somebody who's been in the outdoor industry before, (laughs) people get hurt, (laughs) you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I think every single one of the ice swimmers that I know and have been talking to, all of us fell this winter. And yeah, like sometimes it is a little, a little scary and you do kind of look at yourself and you're like, why am I climbing over icy rocks to try to get into the muddy side of a river for 10 minutes? (laughs) You know, like, (laughs) what is my life? But then you get in and you're like, oh, I know why I did this. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) solves all my problems that's why (laughs) yeah right I feel amazing that's why amazing yeah so I I think um you know I I'm somebody who's really familiar with this area super familiar with outdoor swimming and with currents and and stuff like that people who aren't as familiar with that stuff you absolutely need a a support buddy (laughs) somebody who's going to be a strong enough swimmer or somebody who loves you enough to jump in after you (laughs) Yeah, ju- jumping into <laughs> ice cold water after you. They got to love you. <laughs> and um yeah, definitely not doing the breath work in the water. Bad idea. <laughs> okay, so you do it before you get in. Yeah, I um will either do it in the car on the way over if somebody else is driving. Don't do it while you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> So zen. I'm like, so zen. <laughs> I'm just gonna forget about the wheel for a second. Right. <laughs> yeah, not a good idea. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely bringing a buddy. Definitely doing the breath work before. I even like to do it lying in my bed, maybe even 20 minutes before I'm getting into the water, because that gives your body a chance to actually incorporate some of that chemistry that you've just changed. And so yeah, there are a lot of people who will just either do it as they're going in or do it right beforehand. And I think at least for me, I've noticed that the further ahead I do it, the better my swim is. <laughs> That's so cool that you're yeah. able to like do this every day. That is every such a practice. Day. I mean, I, I think I needed something to do every day. Again, you know, lost my job. <laughs> I've been a, a working girl. <laughs> no, we'll not say that. I was a working woman. <laughs> yes, girl. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I was working from the time I was 12. I worked in like my local library, <laughs> making a paycheck all the way back then. And, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, um, I loved all my jobs. I've had so many amazing jobs. I worked in um, like a three-star hotel in Edinburgh doing, um, <laughs> doing like hotel registration management and stuff like that. It was it's been such a fun life and I've, you know, there, I've lived a lot. I've had a lot of fun things happen to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I think about work now, I think about the fact that my reliability as a worker is gone. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing with so many of these chronic illnesses and, and the ones that I have, they're all like dynamic. <laughs> you know, you can have, you can have good days, you can have bad days, and then you can have really bad days. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But you almost never have really good days. <laughs> almost never. <laughs> yep. But, you know, it's like, I, I think about going back to work. I think about the things that I would love to do or the things that I would try to do. And to be an employed person right now, um, I feel like I, I would just disappoint. <laughs> yeah. Because even if I'm smart and brilliant and amazing and I do good work, I can't show up every day. I agree. Did you lose your job because of being chronically ill? Yep. Yeah, and I hadn't worked there long enough the like um workers comp mm-hmm. uh disability. So yeah, they just kicked me out. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So did the, how did they go about that? It were you just missing work because of it and then they were like, "Sorry, you can't." Show yeah. Up. Um, yeah, it was it was maybe like the sixth day in a row that I called out. Or no, you know what it was? I called out on a Sunday when I didn't have work, and then I forgot to call out on Monday because I thought I didn't have work. So they did the like, well, no call, no show, and I was, and like called my manager on a Sunday and was like, I can't come into work today. And then <laughs> yeah, and there Dude, it goes. because we have so much shit going on. Like we're trying to manage our bodies. Just like getting food into our bodies is an event that is challenging. Yeah. Like there's so yeah. many things that we're trying to manage, and having a schedule where people aren't flexible with that is very impossible I feel like and like shout out to anyone that is able to do that I want to know how I'm completely impressed with (laughs) yeah with people who who work with this condition I'm like "Uh uh-uh you know if I've got if I've got five things I can do a day let's say that's generous and let's say getting out of bed is one of them (laughs) right getting dressed is one of them Mm -hmm. you know for me I'm gonna put makeup on, put a bathing suit on and go to a river. <laughs> and that is my five things. <laughs> and that's my five things. And that to me is self-love, self-healing mm-hmm. and doing work on what I, what I as a person need to be doing work on, which yep. is making Surviving. sure that my brain isn't melting <laughs> with this disease to make sure that you know, my soul and my mind can elevate and, and not, yeah, again, like, I just keep going back to it, transcend or die, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, like, I just, I just could not live that way. And I can't live with that that way. And I know that if I stopped doing the water, I would go right back to it. Wow. And so since doing the water dives, have you been off pain medication? I, um, I did a trial for a a med over the winter that was supposed to be a anti-inflammatory. It's like an IL-6 blocker or something like that. And um, it it was interesting. Definitely. It definitely did some stuff for the fibromyalgia, but it just did not touch the pain from the EDS, which is definitely the the worst pain. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I kind of made the decision to go off that and get a prescription for codeine again. You know, like I've tried Vicodin and it weirdly just doesn't touch that level of pain. Mm. It's like, it'll work on anything up to maybe an eight, but anything over a 10 and it's just, it just doesn't do anything for it. It just kind of, again, dissociates you, loops Mm -hmm. you out. And um, yeah, I mean, the codeine is really helpful. And again, I take it only when I'm, you know, at a 15. (laughs) And I'm like, I need a break from that yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And so it, it is really helpful for that. And it kind of, it's more of like a goofy drug and less of like a loopy drug. So I do have that. And I say I probably take one to two pills on a single day every three to four weeks or maybe two to three weeks. You know, it's mm-hmm. like 
without that medication, I can easily manage probably like 90% of my days mm-hmm. with the ice. But yeah, if I stopped doing the ice, <laughs> right. forget it, you know, yeah. <laughs> but I feel so lucky to, to be able to have so little of that kind of like mind altering medication going mm-hmm. on. Cause I mean, everything that they try to throw you at you for this stuff affects your brain yeah, and affects your bodies in different ways. It's like, and it is, it's like, it's tough to get out of that cloud when you're in there. And like, it's, it is a tough road. And I think that a lot of people need that substance in order to make it through the day. And like, that's okay. It's okay that that is your life. And I think that it's okay that you have to take these things and it shouldn't be stigmatized. And it's just whatever your body can handle. And if you don't like the way it makes you feel, then don't take it, you know, or take it if you like it. Like either way, what you are feeling and what you can handle and what makes you be able to go through your day. That's the only important thing. Yeah, if if everyone was kind of like living from a space where they were able to be intuitive with their body and understand the effects of of those kind of drugs and be able to feel within themselves whether or not those effects are worth it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because, you know, yeah, there's so many drugs out there, so many drugs out there that could possibly improve your day, but do they make your tomorrow worse? Mm. Is the hangover from the mm-hmm. drug going to be worse than <laughs> just feeling the pain all the way through and getting in touch with that and being able to manage that pain in some different way? What do your doctors say about one, the ice baths, and then two, your overall like outlook for the rest of your chronic illness? They all love that I do the ice. Nice. <laughs> they all love it. And they've all kind of like heard of it in some different contexts. A couple of them have heard of Wim Hof. My chiropractor actually um, suggested that I start doing the ice baths specifically for pain because Wim doesn't really go into that side. He has like a couple of things that he's done with people with almost like more debilitating chronic illnesses like MS. So he's definitely like done some work around illness and, and he talks a lot about inflammation and stuff. So it's part of, of what he does, but it's not like specifically out there. Hey, you have a chronic illness, try ice baths, you know? Mm. So she, she kind of brought my attention to that. And, um, my, my rheumatologist, um, is really excited about it too. I mean, he sees so many people with fibromyalgia and I think they all are kind of like watching me and, and starting to suggest (laughs) ice baths to a lot of their other patients. And, um, I've certainly brought like a Chinese herbal medicine into my doctor and they're like very open to the like holistic experience, which is nice. Wow. That is yeah. stri- like, honestly, not a lot of doctors are. So it's very interesting that they are. Yeah. And I think it's partially where I live. You know, I live in a, in a very liberal rural area <laughs> and um, yeah, they all, I don't know, like the, the longevity piece is hard. Cause I think um, I'm so young. None of them want to say, Hey, you're done. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I think they, they all are, are really interested in, in what I'm going to be able to create as my equilibrium and how functional I'm going to be. Cause again, like I've only been doing the ice for six months. Wim Hof's been doing it for 60 years. And that man is, you know, like yeah. he's, he's a superhero really. And <laughs> So I I wonder, you know, I wonder going into this further, being able to push myself more in the ice, being able to engage with different parts of my like mental power. I wonder where this is all going to put me. And I think I just am sort of like trying to just keep my heart open to all possibilities, you know, totally things get worse. They get worse. I'll deal with it. If things get better then they get better and I'm going to deal with that. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. That's such a great attitude to have. And it sounds like throughout everything, have you been able to stay positive throughout your experience with chronic illness? I wouldn't say every second. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Especially the last six months. I mean, the first, the first couple were really hard and, and I was, I was not in a position where I was finding ways to support myself at all. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and it's hard, you know, (laughs) suddenly your, your body starts torturing you for no reason. (laughs) 24 seven. And you have to kind of go, okay, how do I still love myself? How do I still love my body? How do I still do all of the things that I love to do? Or how do I do something that I love to do? You know, how, how do I, you know, how how do I live now? (laughs) Cause I'm being tortured 24 (laughs) seven, but I think I've, I've found so much positivity in it and I've found so much to be positive about. And I am completely still positive right now, especially in the last couple of weeks. I mean, my Instagram has blown up. There's been (laughs) like a couple of blogs who have kind of like picked up a couple of my things and and like, you know, you're interviewing me right now. This is amazing. (laughs) I like wake up every day to messages from people who have had fibromyalgia for 10 years and who have said, I've, I, I, no one ever told me about this. I didn't know this could help me, you know, tell me about it. And so I'll write to them and some people who got diagnosed two days ago and don't know what to do and are yeah. saying, oh, wait, this could help me. You know, <laughs> I think that there's, there's so much here for me in what I'm doing. And there's so much here for other people in what I'm doing. This is depending on what your living situation is. Most of us have access to either open water or a bathtub or a shower. And so the like accessibility around this is, is there, you know, (laughs) people can absolutely be experimenting and doing this. And I think it's, it's been exciting and so rewarding for me to be able to bring some people's attention to that. That's awesome. And I so appreciate you sharing with us and like just explaining how you get through your day to day. It's so cool to watch. Thank you so much. It's yeah. Been Where can we follow your beautiful journey? So I've got the Instagram at swim away the pain. Um, and that uh, I post every single day, whatever the swim <laughs> and whatever words I'm thinking about. Sometimes it's a little poetic. Sometimes it's a little sad. Sometimes it's very happy. <laughs> it's a little bit of everything, but it's all me. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, those photographs are all taken, or most of them, probably 90% are taken by my partner, um, whose Instagram you can find through mine as well. Nice. And uh, he'll be building his little portfolio. <laughs> Very good. Awesome. Yeah. It's been so exciting and, and just so rewarding to, to feel like I can have this time to actually start healing and, and actually start breathing and living again. (laughs) Yes. Oh, I'm so happy that that's your situation. And I can't wait to follow you along on it. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Seriously, such a joy to have you. Like, you're just beaming with positivity. I love it so much. (laughs) (laughs) And I give you such credit for going into the water every day because I don't know. I don't know how your partners do it or your friends do it. Like, I don't know how, how they do it. I will say I'm a very good coach in person. (laughs) Oh, good. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's interesting. You know, it's, it's a, it's a hard thing to do and it's a very easy thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. (laughs) It's all happening in your mind, you know? True. Oh, it's It's not like, um, I'm not out there climbing rocks or trees or something or. (laughs) True. Yeah. Something really physically exerting, you know, it's, you're just walking into some water. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love it. Are we not fully amazed by the fact that this beautiful mermaid is an ice beautiful mermaid who is also the warmest, most bubbliest person I've ever met? Like, how how does it go together? I give her so much credit. Try it out. If you try it out, hit her up. Make sure that you're taking all the precautions and being safe, but also let Karin know that she has inspired you to dive into freezing cold waters outside in nature. How beautiful. Seriously, such a zen-like attitude to have towards this. I'm so in love with it, and I'm so in love with Karin. She is so gorgeous, and I'm so happy that she was able to share with us a little bit about her pain management in fibromyalgia. Like and subscribe for a new episode of Still Positive on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Leave me a review. Tell me what's up. Say, hey, if you want to be on this show, shoot me an email and we'll make it happen, people. 
Sending all the love to you. Hope you're well and stay safe.